Unbelievably, Greg. It's Saturday again. I know. It's amazing, isn't it? goes around quickly, doesn't it? it Our lives are slipping away. Oh, happy days, Jason. <laughs> anyway, on today's episode, Greg, we're talking about the UK's longest running sitcoms. So, what I thought we could do, Greg, so. is this week we could do the longest running UK sitcoms. Right. Next week, we could do the longest running US sitcoms. And at the end of that show, we could combine the two and see which is the most successful sitcom across our two. Honestly, countries. it's one of my best ideas, this one, isn't it? Anyway, Greg... Top US, no, UK this week. UK sitcoms. this week. UK this week, Jason. Longest running sitcoms. I'm starting with... Go on, then. Not the man in the mirror. <laughs> the vicar. Or as you sing. What's the, what's the word you sing? Oh, message could have been Andy Gibbon. Who's Andy Gibbon? I don't know, but that's what it sounded like when I was a kid. Why did he Anyway. He would be furious. Should we leave him? Yeah. You don't want Jacko in it, do you? No. You get angry with Jacko. So, Greg... Running so, for 13 years, from 1994 to 2007, what do you think the first one on the list could possibly be? Well, you've just said it. What? The Vicar of Dibley. Did I? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that away then, didn't I? <laughs> the Vicar of Dibley. I can't believe it run that long, though. I know. I, it was okay. I thought it was okay. There were some very funny moments. Best clip. When she jumps in the puddle. Oh, that's hilarious. Which is obviously the clip I'm going to put in in a minute when we finish talking about it. Uh, Dawn French was obviously the lead actress in this, and I believe she wrote much of it too. Uh, it was with Richard Curtis. And it was funny, really, wasn't it? Because she went off and did that. And the other one from French and Saunders, she went off and did absolutely fabulous. So yeah. they both did really well, didn't they? Did, they did, yeah. Well, they are probably the most successful female comedy duo in this country, aren't they? Yeah, but have you ever watched them live? No. Uh, the Vicar of Dibley is a British sitcom which originally ran on BBC One from the 10th of November 1994 to the 2nd of January 1998. And they had three sets of specials as well. It's set in the fictional small Oxfordshire village called Dibley, which is assigned a female vicar following the 1992 changes in the Church of England that permitted the ordination of women. Well said, Jason. Thank you very much. Well done, that's great. It's in all of my notes here that i written... In ratings terms, the programme is amongst the most successful ever, Greg. It's, really? Yeah, highest, some of the highest ratings for a TV sitcom, uh, which is probably why it ran for that amount of time. Um, again, it starred Dawn French, Trevor Peacock, Gary Wald, Horn, James Fleet, John Bluthel, Liz Smith, Roger Lloyd Pack and Emma Chambers. Roger Lloyd Pack played a character that wasn't dissimilar to his character in Only Fools and Horses. Didn't Trigger. He was um, genius when he got blessed. Yeah, he was. Um, but it was a very, very successful series. There was lots of catchphrases and stuff that went around. The no, 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 yes, yes. Yeah, yes. exactly that. Do you know what I didn't like, though? The very last episode, I know it was she finally got married and all that, but do you remember she flew off? I remember Kylie Minogue was involved. Yeah, it was just a bit odd. It was, it was all, you know, it's, it was all real, and then suddenly she just got in her pyjamas and flew. She married Clive Mantle, didn't she? Well, that wasn't his character's name, was no, it? No, but, interesting trivia link, Greg. Oh. Clive Mantle was originally in Superman 4, wasn't he? Yes. And he got cut out. He was, wasn't he? He was the first attempt at Nuclear Man. Nuclear Man. That went wrong. Which, to be honest, if it was ever put in the film, it would have been a bit more disaster than it was. Because, if you look on YouTube, there are some of those clips, and they are hilarious for all the wrong reasons. It's bad. Uh, and you can see why it got cut out. Mm. Um, anyway... That was the Vicar of Dibley, ran for 13 years. Unbelievable. <laughs> Next on the list of the UK's longest running sitcoms, Greg. Um, Ran from 1988 to 1999, then had a break, and ran from 2009 to the present. So overall, it's run for 18 years. Have a guess. Comedy? Yeah. 
I don't think it's one that you would particularly watch. Oh, is it sci-fi? Yes. It's Red Dwarf, It isn't is it? Red Dwarf, yes. Yeah, I don't mind it. I mean, the earlier ones were better, weren't they? They were. I don't mind the new ones, but they aren't as good as the no. older versions. There's some cracking episodes in the first couple of series. Talkie the Toaster springs to mind. Do you remember that one? No. Do you like any toast? Crumpets? No? I'm going to find a clip of that and put it in. Okay. Um, yeah, Red Dwarf's a British science fiction comedy franchise which primarily comprises a television sitcom that aired on BBC Two between 1988 and 1999, and then on Dave since 2009, gaining a whole new generation of followers. How can Dave take it off the BBC? No. How have they managed to do that? that that's I don't still think the BBC me. wanted to develop it any further. I, know, I wonder why though. Uh, it had a very famous theme tune. It's cold outside, yeah, yeah. there's no kind of atmosphere. And, in another little bit of trivia, Greg... Oh, you're full of it today, aren't you, Jason? The person who wrote that theme tune is called Howard Goodall. Howard Goodall also wrote a musical version of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and was also a former pupil of my secondary school headmaster. And so when we decided to put on the musical version of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Howard Goodall himself came in and directed it, Greg. Well... So I've worked with Howard Goodall. Strike me down, that's the most boring story I've ever heard. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. It's all right. I mean, we're trying to keep you, that's is it? They've gone. Your life. They've never gone. Get back. Good. <laughs> I don't want to remember that ever again. Carry on. One of the series' highlights accolades came in 1994 when an episode from the sixth series, Gunman of the Apocalypse, won an International Emmy Award in the Popular Arts category, and in the same year the series was also awarded Best BBC Comedy Series at the British Comedy Awards. Again, makes you wonder why the BBC stopped making it, doesn't That's it? That's what I don't understand. I really don't get it. Uh, this is one that has crossed the pond. I believe it's also quite popular in America. I'm not sure where the new ones are. I don't know. And uh, some of our American viewers struggle with our accents. I wonder how they get on with Dave Lister and his Liverpudlian accent. Mm. Do you remember the very first one? The very first episode? Yeah. I don't know if I do. It was really strange, because it had loads of people in it, because obviously it was, a, it was a ship full oh, of Oh, yeah, first. yeah, I remember, yeah. And then some of them all, just all died, and it was Did just them left. Did they remake this in America, or did they have our version? Well, I, when I've been to America, the seven times I've been there, um, I went into their local, not, not local, it was huge, uh, DVD shop and everything, and it was all uh, versions of Red Dwarf on DVD. Thanks for that really boring story, Greg. Well, why don't we talk about your school show again, <laughs> Jason? <laughs> Um, very, very popular, Red Dwarf, and it's still going now. There's a new series about to come out, isn't there? What? You just hurt sometimes, Jay. Red Dwarf, the second longest-running sitcom in the UK. Here's a clip of Talking the Toaster. Unless, of course, I can't find that clip, and it'll be a different clip of Red Dwarf. Useless. Howdy doodly do. How's it going? I'm Talkie. Talkie Toaster, your chirpy... Breakfast companion. Talkie's the name, toasting's the game. Anyone like any toast? Look, I don't want any toast, and he doesn't want any toast. In fact, no one around here wants any toast. Not now, not ever. No toast. How about a muffin? Moving on, Greg. I've, um, I've been taking some notes about the show so far, Jason. What, like a critique? Yeah, and uh, basically, if you just slow down a little bit, you know, because you're getting a bit too fast. Um, and secondly, you've just said something about the... Last program we spoke about being the second longest. I, I think you'll find that's wrong, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. So have a look, Jason. It's, it's just on my notes here. Yeah, it's it's the, it's the third longest. Run third, isn't it? So what we'll do is we'll. You, you won't say no more about it today, okay? What about the uh, the glare on the screen? You notice that? Don't mention the glare, Jason. Okay. You know people don't like the glare. I won't. So. So. The second longest running sitcom in the UK, Greg. Yes. Um, aired from 1981 to 2003. Ran for 22 years. 2003? Can you guess which sitcom I'm referring to? I'm going to go with Only Fools and Horses. You would be correct. Is it? Go with Only Fools and Horses, Ben. This is one of our favourites, isn't it? Well, I've just been recently watching the documentary that we have on one of our channels over here, and it's going behind the scenes and showing you extra bits and outtakes, and it's brilliant. It's still brilliant. There are so many classic moments from Only Fools and Horses that 
There's only one clip I hope you're going to show though. I will do my best to find that particular clip you're talking about and you are talking about the time that Del Boy, well I'm not going to give it away in case anybody <laughs> Everyone knows seen it. it. No, but some of our American friends might not have seen it. There's a, there's a clip in this new programme, this documentary that I'm watching and they showed you the Spanish people trying to take this over and they did the full um, and you, it was just giving it away. yeah I don't care uh, it was horrendous it was it, he's genius at doing this isn't he do the way he doesn't move do you remember not another Michael Jackson song the chandelier episode what? Greg well everyone always said to me the the, the the most comedy famous comedy voted moment was the the bar but it wasn't actually it was the chandelier was it I mean I'm not going to play that clip should play that clip <laughs> keep on <laughs> So, um, you'll have to look it up on YouTube, it's hilarious. Basically, they get a job to clean chandeliers in a, in a big house and it all goes terribly wrong. That was a true story, that was. Was it? That was John Sullivan's writer's dad's true story. Wow. See, I'm With just full of it today. Yes, you are, as always. Um, and yeah, there were lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of classic episodes. One of my particular favourites was the Lounge Singer episode. Oh, quiet. Quiet! <laughs> And if you don't know what we're talking about, please go on YouTube and look up the clips from Only Fools and Horses. It is one of the most well-written sitcoms this country has ever produced. And sadly, the writer is no longer with us, John Sullivan. Do you know what another good thing about it was? I, I, I stuttered then. The other g good thing was, uh, it was no, there was no swearing in it. There was no... No. It was just a clean cut. No filth. No, no filth. No um, Only Fools and Horses, Greg, was written by John Sullivan and there were seven series originally broadcast on BBC One in the United Kingdom from 1981 to 1991. There were, of course, some Christmas specials until it ended in 2003. Uh, episodes are regularly repeated on UK TV on the comedy channel Gold and Yesterday and occasionally repeated on BBC One. That's my one criticism, is that I think all of the repeats have kind of taken the shine off of it a little bit. I think you're bit. right. I've got one criticism about it. What? You know when they they when they finally became millionaires? Yeah. And they came back with another like three episodes. They lost the money again like that, didn't they? Yeah. Why couldn't we see them rich? Because that's not what they are, is it? No, but I think they could have done another. There's another avenue completely there with that. A rich only for the horses, even just for one episode. But the fact that they took them straight back to Peckham and. I just thought it was a bit. Mm. There have been a couple of spin offs. Rock and Chips was one. Um, Terrible. Can't remember any of those, but there, are, there was another spin off, wasn't there? I'm sure there was. No, I don't know. But they've just found a lost episode, haven't they, Greg, that has never been aired? Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. No, it's going to be on gold in this country pretty soon, I think. But Only Fools and Horses is one of our particular favourites. Absolutely brilliant sitcom. If for some reason you live in a country where you haven't been able to see it, Please give it a Google. That's my new catchphrase, isn't it, Greg? Give yes, it a Google. It's coming soon on one of the mugs. Give, give it, it a Google. Give it a Google. <laughs> <laughs> that was the second longest running sitcom in the UK. <laughs> I think we're on a winner here, Shree. All right. Play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> The longest running sitcom in the UK, Greg, has run on TV for 37 years. Right, when did it finish? Tell me that. It ran from 1973 to 2010. Right. Got it? I think I have. What is it? Is it Last of the Summer Wine? It is Last of the Summer Wine. Um, this, again, was one of those sitcoms that was just... Like you said, no swearing. Endearing. No, yeah, absolutely. Set in um, the British countryside in Lancashire, I think. It was always had beautiful views, beautiful scenery. The acting in it was amazing. It was a British sitcom created and written by Roy Clark, and it was originally broadcast on the BBC, and it premiered as an episode of the Comedy Playhouse in 1973. That was three years before I was born, Greg. And the first series of episodes followed on the 12th of November 1973 from, and then ran from 1983 to 2010. Uh, produced and directed by Alan J. W. Bell. He did every single episode. That's rare, isn't it? Cool, yeah. Um, the 
BBC confirmed on the 2nd of June 2010 that Last of Summer Wine would no longer be produced and the 31st series would be its last. And the final episode was broadcast on the 29th of August that year. Do you remember the episode where Compo, they re obviously because he died in real life, they wrote him out of it? Yeah, I mean, for those who have never seen Last of the Summer Wine, it's basically about a group of older gentlemen who have retired, um, and it sort of focuses around their adventures, doesn't it, if you like. And they did get up to some adventures, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, and Russ Abbott was even in it for a time. Well, what that must be But I'm going to find you a particularly funny clip of Last of the Summer Wine, because it was just a great sitcom. Sunday afternoons, wasn't it? Yes. Da, 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 yeah, the mu that's the only thing. I mean, I love the music, but it's just a bit sad, isn't it? Da, 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 da. It's supposed to be a comedy, you know. But Ooh. it was very funny. Mm -hmm. Nora Batty. Nora Batty. Ooh. Death is very democratic. All those lusting after equality are finally going to get it. I'm fit for my, my age. I can hear you wheezing from here. How can I be wheezing from there? I'm wheezing from anywhere, I'm wheezing from here. Because <laughs> I think I'm wheezing. Well, only from one end. <laughs> eBay Fine Number 3 Pound of the Week. Oh eBay fine for under three pounds of the week, Greg. I've got to say, Jason, this is getting hard. Oh? Yeah, I think we're going to have to up the price soon, because <laughs> this is getting a bit difficult now. Yeah, but it, this whole point of this section was to prove that you can still get a bargain on eBay. Don't get me wrong, I've won this week. I don't think you have. Oh, yeah, I have. You wait till you see mine. Wait, do you want to wipe yours out first? No, you show me what you've got, Greg. What is that? Oh, that seems to have been... This, Jason, is an official, it's all proper, H a a atrium. Who's atrium? Is it that's not an official one, then, is it? The this is the atrium. It's a fold-up, it's a school bag, basically. I don't know whether you can just... Um, you've, you've destroyed yeah, the staples coming off there. lasted since 1983. You've had it for 80, three minutes. How did you know it was 83? That's a guess. Well, it's, it doesn't say 83, though. Well, that's amazing. It is amazing. <laughs> but you can see, there's a picture of um, Mr. T on the back with the car coming through. It's a proper... I might rip it open and get the bag Don't out in a minute. Don't open it. Do you not think so? No. It's a proper 83 school bag. That, that I think that is fantastic. And you, you got that for it. under £3, including postage? Not including postage. But it doesn't... That's, surely that's, that's fair. So, changing the rules a little bit, are we? There. How much was that, Greg? Uh, three pound. Exactly. Well, yeah, but the postage was like twelve quid. <laughs> it wasn't really. In Korea. <laughs> <laughs> How much was the postage? Two pound ninety or something, something like that. One seventy-five. Something like that. that is pretty amazing, Greg. So there you go, the eighteen official bag that I'm probably going to open. Don't open it. Um, wait till you see this. It's very small. Mm. No way did you get that for under three pounds. I did. No way. Micro Machines Predator. There's no way you got that for under three pounds. You've spent about 40 quid and said, <laughs> look what I got, Greg. I haven't. You have? Honest to God, I got this for two pounds 40 something. Just nobody seemed to bid on it. I did have to pay postage on top of that as well. Oh, so you've cheated as well <laughs> then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We're yeah. both rubbish at this. <laughs> that is amazing though. So it's my, Micro Machines it. Predator. This is like typically it. 80s for me, where they would take films that were rated 18 and produced toys. It's true that, isn't for, it? like Rambo and stuff. Rambo? I mean, you'd never watch Rambo as a six-year-old, would no. you? I suppose you'd watch the cartoon, but there wasn't a cartoon of Predator. They just brought out a Micro Machines Predator version. That's brilliant. I don't, there's no year on this, Greg. There's no... what? 1996? Well, the film didn't come out in 1996. Well, that's not very good then, is it? Mine's 83. Mine's a proper... Ebay Retro Fine of the Week. We haven't called it Retro though, have we? So. Yeah, this did. This was released in 1996. Probably as a collector's toy for adults, not a toy for children. What we'll do is, Jason, we'll just put that down there. Like that. So, I think that you're. Why don't we ask the viewers, Greg, who they think has the best purchase? Because it's me, isn't it? No. Leave a comment. Let us know. Who you think got the best eBay find of the week for under three pounds of the week? Well, yours is no good anyway. I've just smashed it. 
I need to spend a lot less time in front of the computer screen Greg can give me a headache. Is it? Yeah. Are you sure it's not that glare on that screen behind? It might be. Alright. Well, anyway, I'll cheat you up. Um. Ready for this? Yeah, I am, yeah. Okay. Jason, mm -hmm. how do you make antifreeze? Well, I don't know what the exact chemical formula is. You steal her blanket. Because then anti will be cold then, so what you say is anti-freeze. And it's time for a commercial break. I knew a boring chap. Eddie was his name. He fell for the taste of ready bread and was never quite the same. Eddie is ready to take on the world. He said goodbye to the doll. Like he takes the step like a choo choo train. Tough, tough, tough. Ready, Eddie, they call him when he goes to school. It's ready, ready, just the same that makes a laser so blue. Ha <laughs> ha! Get up and blow it, ready, Breck! Henry can't open his mouth. He's going for a filling. One? Bet you'd rather have none. Try Colgate. Now there are two great tastes. Great regular flavour and new blue minty gel. And what Colgate and every dentist really want is zero fillings. Could that happen one day? Colgate hopes so. Already Colgate's advanced fluoride protection means no other toothpaste comes closer to zero fillings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what I want. Now two Colgates, regular and new blue minty gel. <coughs> Nobody's working harder than Colgate for zero fillings. This is a shout out to our viewers. It's about the stuff they sent us. If we don't have an intro next week, I'll sing that again. Oh yeah, that's that sorted then. <laughs> Tis shout out time, Greg. Tis his shout out time. Um, and here are a few shout outs. That's Ross, our shout out of the week from last week. Shout out of the week, oh. Um Our first shout out goes to Laura Lewis from Houston, Texas. Houston, I think that's how you say it. Houston, we have a problem. Houston, isn't it? Uh, she says, You guys are great, and could we wish Olivia a happy birthday from Mom and Smoochie? When was the birthday? I don't know. Well, it could have been last month. It could have been, but... Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday for whenever it was, Olivia. Who's Smoochie? <laughs> Who knows? Um, anyway, here's another one. This is actually from Henry from England, Greg. He would like a shout-out and says to us, keep up the great show. Thanks, Henry from England. Thanks, Henry from England. Um, and that brings us to our shout-out of the week, Greg. Aww. Um... That means Ross is leaving us. Oh, let's take Ross down. There we go. I've got to be careful here. There we go. So Ross gets filed. We'll just put him in the file. We do look after all these pictures. There we go, Ross. And, and here is a new one. Greg, this is this week's shout out of the week. And Katie, and I am hoping I'm pronouncing this right, Katie Knapek. I'm thinking it's a silent K at the beginning. Or is it Katie Knapek? You'll have to let us know. Uh, she loves watching us all from Dallas, Texas. That looks Another like it's me one there, doesn't it? Texas. Look, if you look, it looks like it's me. No. No? And she actually wrote in her email, love watching your... Y'all? Y'all. Oh, yes. From Dallas, Texas. We're cool now. <laughs> Not everything is about that, you know. Uh, she says this picture is her as Brett Michaels. Who? Brett Michaels. I know a wrestler called Shawn Michaels. That's not him. Uh, there we there go. you go, Katie. You will be on the Wall of Fame for the next week. For the next week? Um, or if you need... like him, he snuck on the night, one night before, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. <laughs> um, we need some more shout-outs from you. If you would just like an ordinary shout-out, i.e. no picture, send us an email to tnt at totgoo.com. That's nut at totgoo.com. Does not have to be in capitals. No, it does not. If you would like a chance to be the shout out of the week and end up on the Wall of Fame, we do need a picture too. So please send us a picture. Otherwise, just send us an email and we will give you a shout out. And you could end up on the Wall of Fame. In the meantime, we will be back on 
Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday with Tea and Toast Extra. Mondays are coming again soon. Yes, they are. Uh, then promise. we'll be back on Friday with a weekly scoop and Saturday again with Tea and Toast. Um, thank you for watching. As always, please don't forget to like, comment and share our videos, which will help us grow our subscribers, won't it, Greg? What you said. Uh, there's a couple of people this week who said they didn't get a notification that our video has gone live. Well, YouTube don't always show notifications for your subscriptions unless you press the bell next to the subscribe button. So if you're subscribed to our channel already, down there somewhere it'll say subscribed and next to it there's a little bell. If you press the bell that means you will get all notifications for our channel. Good isn't it Greg? I can't see anything. It's down there. Don't Is it? it? Um, so once again thank you and we will see you again on Wednesday.